Hello, and welcome back to Let's Complete Thomas Was Alone. Last time, we got through the first set of levels, and we talked a little about this game. And uh, now it's the second episode, and we shall move on to the second set of levels right now. Uh, these little text things that say something about the game, outside of the game, the developers making these AI that Thomas are, will come up between level sets. Chris took an immediate and deep dislike to the skinny red rectangle. Who the hell did this Thomas think he was? And, uh, as I mentioned last time, there would be some other characters. And this is the first one you meet. His name is Chris. Um... You know, he, he's not as tall as Thomas, and he, he's a little bit wider than Thomas. Um, and he can't jump quite as high. Uh, I, I really do like Chris. I, I like all the characters, but I think I particularly like Chris because I see a lot of myself in Chris. Chris had been doing fine. He wasn't the highest jumper, but he'd held his own. He'd even been graceful at times. Well, not actually... Not technically graceful, it's probably, probably the wrong word, but, you know, fine. There was that skinny little runt leaping about like he owned the place. Um, so now that we have multiple characters, and we'll meet more of them later, we can switch between them like this. And the reason I switched there is, uh, so I could get Thomas up here to help him get over that jump, because uh, Chris can't get over that jump that we were at by himself. And, and that is another theme of this game, is that the characters have to help each other through some of their obstacles. Like, um, as I was saying, I like Chris a lot. I do like all the characters, but I like Chris because I think I see my, a lot of myself in him. He's kind of cynical and sarcastic and you know, doesn't care, you know, outwardly what a lot of people or the other characters think about them, but he, but he does care deeply for those people he considers his friends. Okay, this was more like it. A glowy white thing. Only Chris could get to it, which of course made it all the more enticing. What would it do? What new opportunity might this switch open up to him? Again, another thing I love about this game is that there are multiple ways to tell stories in games. Um, obviously, one of the major ways in this game is through the story itself, the narrator. But this game is particularly good at, and a lot of other games don't do this one, because... Great, great. Another chance for Thomas to jump slightly higher than Chris. How fortunate. Seriously, this made the whole switch-pressing thing entirely worthwhile. But because, um, as I was saying, because video games have mechanics, um, they're different from things like movies or music or other mediums of art in that the player interacts with the game. And one of the things that only video games can do is tell a story through game mechanics. Is this good? Because on the surface, it did not seem good. Chris was pretty scared. Little Red seemed fine, happy to be on his merry little adventure. Uh, this game Chris does... couldn't shake the feeling that things had taken a significant turn for the worse since Thomas had joined him. This thing has... Sure, he'd been able to piggyback his way to ever so slightly higher platforms, but where had that got him? Well, to ever so slightly higher platforms, which was sort of his point. Um, as I was trying to say earlier, this uh, game is particularly good at telling its story through the game mechanics and uh, character uh, development through the game mechanics. Like, Chris can't jump as high or as well because of his size as Thomas can. And Chris kind of resents that. And that's a major part of his character and a major part of the story. And it's told um not solely, but partly through the mechanics of the game. And 
I think it's great that this game takes advantage of something that only this medium of art can provide, like that. Uh, I don't think enough games do that, really. Chris stared at Thomas with pure hatred. He seemed so very happy at their situation. Friends together, a brave fellowship of quadrilaterals on a quest for greatness. <laughs> that would be fine. But it was all the obvious observation that Thomas was doing which grated. Every time they saw something vaguely new, Chris would hear a satisfied little hmm from the vaulting idiot. Chris also he thinks uh... the next portal would split them up. If only for a few levels. Chris uh, doesn't think Thomas is quite as intelligent as he is, uh, or as uh, Chris is. Yeah, which is another part of the story, of course. Now, I can't remember if Chris can make this on his own, or if I have to get on top of Thomas to make it. Nope, he can make it. Ooh, we can't make that. But yeah, um... Chris kind of feels that he's superior, intelligent, intelligence-wise, to a lot of the other characters. Come here. There we go. But, uh, to an extent, he kind of gets over it and learns to, you know, rely on them some without you know, hating it so much. Again, the, the the character development in this game is fantastic, and Mike Biffle does a great job of uh, bringing his characters to life and making them seem human, and uh, that kind of thing. That you know is one of I, I suppose the greater struggles of video games, especially when the characters are you know necessarily human, normal in appearance like these. Like these characters are, is that it, it might be difficult to make them or, or get the players to be attached to them. John knew. He knew that this was his chance, a moment to shine. This was game day. Again, I, I said I would probably say this about all the characters, but I, I do also really like John. John John's always even more happy than uh, Thomas, I suppose. This would not do. John needed room to show off his exceptional skills. As it was, he was trapped on the wrong side of these little dot things. Where did they come from, anyway? Is, uh, perhaps not quite as happy as Thomas. But, um, he's sort of mentorish, I suppose. He, he, he thinks perhaps he's a little bit older than they are. I'm not sure, but he kind of mentors in a way. John inhaled the air of the open space, and it smelled of awesome. Perhaps he's a little... Time to flex those sure. muscles, to put his training to use time, to show those little dots how it was done. Uh, perhaps he's a little less mature. John decided to press the switch to let the little dots catch up with him. John cared for his new allies. Uh, less mature than his other You could tell the from the sympathetic expression he practiced in the mirror all these years. Uh, less mature than the other characters. Uh, so perhaps he's not older. Maybe he's a bit younger. Maybe he's just younger. I don't know. But uh, I do like John. And uh, obviously, as you can tell, um, John's big you know, mechanic is that he can jump really high and really far. Um, there will be a lot of this in this game, uh, a lot of just switching back and forth between characters so that they can help each other up uh, steps or to higher platforms. Um, so there will be quite a lot of that in this game. off the edge. Down we go. Let me see. I'm not sure exactly what these are. I think they're like extra points or achievements or something. 
I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'll try and show you what I'm talking about in a second. Maybe if I do this. Um, in the corner up there, there's that little black dot thing. And you can... There's something... Ah, there we go. I just got an achievement for that. It's not going to show up on the pod. But, um... I'm not sure exactly what those are. Maybe they just get me achievements. I don't know. I've never actually figured that out about this game. Uh, as far as I can tell, they're not important to the story. Let me go back and get Chris. But maybe they're just little extra things that you can grab. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But yes, I, I have completed this game before, but it was... It, it's been quite a while since I played it all the way through. So, uh... Some of this will be remembrance for me, and I may not remember all of it. So some of this may be almost as new to me as it is to you. Okay, I think I need to get these two down here for him to jump off of. Or, uh, jump, to jump off of. So I can get up there and press that button. John was happy to keep helping. He felt it was important to his image that he was seen to help the little guys. I have to get Chris up here, and then I have to get Thomas up here with him, get Chris on top of Thomas, and then back up here. Yeah, some of these can get just a little bit complicated, and, and you know, perhaps one of my only complaints is that some of it gets a little bit repetitive, but you know, it, it's not too repetitive. I can't fault it that much because I love it the rest of the game so much. Mike Bithel does uh, an absolutely fantastic job with this game. He released a new one uh, earlier in 2015 that is a pure stealth game. Um, no combat or any of that. It's entirely stealth. Uh, you know, kind of how I enjoy stealth, perhaps, is can't be seen at all, or if you are seen, you have to kind of hide. Uh, it's called Volume, and it also has really great voice acting. It's kind of a futuristic take on uh, Robin Hood, I suppose. He didn't mind them so much either. The red one, Thomas, had a charming way of applauding every time John jumped. Um. Yeah, Volume, I think, is sort of a futuristic take on the Robin Hood story of the rich. Or it's also sort of you know, politically this you know, sort of futuristic political message, perhaps. It's also really good. Um, it's not a whole lot like this game, other than that it has really great sport acting, and I like the story. But if you do like this game, or if you like stealth games, or pure stealth games, I would suggest you check it out, because it's really good. Um, I know some people don't like some of the, the mechanics. The angry orange one was less immediately likable, but his unremitting cynicism and tutting amused John. Um, I, I know some people didn't like some of the mechanics of volume, but uh, like I said, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty darn good as a stealth game, a, a sort of, it wasn't on the same level, I don't think, and, and I think a lot of people were wanting another, um, Thomas was alone, perhaps, um, but, but it's not the same thing, and I think it stands on its own, um, but it's definitely a great, you know, second game for Mike Bishop. 
it didn't receive the acclaim, perhaps, that uh, Thomas was alone did, but it was still really good. It was a really good second game. This was interesting. A floating target. This would require coordination, balance, and timing. John was sure the dots would be lost, but he was happy to guide them to triumph. Chris come down here. Jump up on top of these two. Maybe that's what the dots were for. They were there to extend John's reach, to make his performance even more impressive. John liked the thought. He decided to keep them. <laughs> okay, everybody's in their place. Now, with that, because this is starting a new set of levels, um, I'm going to call it there. Um, if you like this episode and you want to see more of it, please like and subscribe. Um, there should be some new content coming out on the channel if there hasn't been already within you know, the next week. Um, I hope that comes out soon, and I hope you give some of those other videos a watch. Um, not all of it is mine. But um, I hope you will watch some of the other people that are doing this channel with me as well. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time in our next episode of Let's Complete Thomas Was Alone.